Well, good evening once again as we bring another week to a close. Day 276 of the Biden administration tonight. The January 6th committee appears to have scored a win in its fights against Donald Trump's claim of executive privilege. That is to say, a federal judge has signed off on an expedited hearing for November 4th, about two weeks from now. Trump had sued the committee, you'll recall, claiming materials it was seeking are covered by executive privilege and therefore confidential. There's also news tonight about former Trump Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark, cited in a Senate Judiciary Panel report as a key player in Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 election. The report said he was in direct contact with the former president and willingly pushed other justice officials to act on Trump's false claims of election fraud. CNN reporting tonight Clark will now testify before the January 6th panel next Friday, a week from today. He'll likely be the first Trump White House official to actually comply with a subpoena. One committee member says the panel's eager to hear what led up to the insurrection at the Capitol. Mr. Certainly Chip? has um, information about what was planned uh, and what the intent was. Meantime, the Justice Department is now weighing whether to charge the insurrectionist Steve Bannon with contempt of Congress. That decision expected to take at least a week, possibly longer. So far, Bannon remains the only witness to defy a committee subpoena. The vast majority of people we've called up for interviews uh, or that we've subpoenaed have either come to testify in interview or are engaged in good faith negotiations with the committee. We're not trying to put people in jail. We're just trying to get the information we've been commanded to do by statute about the worst attack on the U.S. Capitol since the War of 1812. People who are ready to come to Washington to do violence to the Capitol. This was also the day an associate of another promoter of the big lie was found guilty in federal court of violating campaign finance laws. Lev Parnas, you remember him, ally of former Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani, was convicted of illegally funneling foreign money to Republican candidates in the 2018 midterms to advance his business interests. Parnas now faces up to 45 years in the slammer. He worked with Giuliani in a search for dirt on the Bidens in Ukraine during the 2020 presidential election. Also tonight, the legal battle over reproductive rights has escalated to a new level. Today, the Supreme Court again refused to block a, to a Texas, block a Texas law that amounts to a near total ban on abortion. The court did agree to fast track its review of the law, scheduling arguments for November 1st, 10 days from now. But importantly, this means the Texas law remains in effect over the months it will likely take the Supreme Court to rule on it. The decision came in an unsigned order, and only Justice Sotomayor filed a dissent, writing, quote, Women seeking abortion care in Texas are entitled to relief from this court now. Because of the court's failure to act today, that relief, if it comes, will be too late for many. Over at the White House, President Biden spent much of the morning strategizing with Schumer and Pelosi on his sweeping domestic spending bill. After the meeting, the speaker hinted they were closer to a deal. It's going to be bigger than anything we've ever done for the American people, for moms and dads who have family responsibilities, for children who take care of their senior parents, for women in the workplace. It's remarkable. For the children and for jobs, it's remarkable. House Democrats are now aiming for a vote on both the spending plan and that infrastructure bill next week. Stay tuned. There are also signs tonight that COVID vaccines could soon be authorized for younger children. The FDA today released data from Pfizer showing its vaccine over 90 percent effective in children 5 to 11 years of age. Late tonight, in fact, just before we came on the air, FDA regulators said the benefits of the vaccine outweigh any risks of side effects in that age group. FDA advisory panel, these things are all uh, done a certain way, meets Tuesday to consider whether approving the vaccine for kids. Then it's on to the CDC. We're also following developments in the incredible story of the fatal shooting involving Alec Baldwin. Officials say he fired a weapon on the set of an independent film he's shooting in New Mexico, 
killing the film cinematographer, injuring the director. The gun had apparently been handed to him containing a live round and not a blank.